Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn about non-echo joins. So before we learn about non-echo joins, let's do a quick review on what an echo join is. So an echo join is a join that uses equalities. So recall that our equality is just a join that uses the equal sign. So some examples of equijoins are join conditions where we're matching first name from one table to first name from another table. Or for example, where we're matching the customer ID from the customer table with the customer ID from the order table. So equijoins just a fancy way of saying that we're matching values equally. So we're using the equal sign in our join condition. I think it follows with a non-equijoin that we're not using the equal sign. So non-equijoin are joints who join conditions use conditional operators other than equals. An example would be where we are matching first name and, la and then last name, but we are checking where one field from a table does not equal field from another table. That's what makes it a non-equo join. So even though in this join condition we are matching column for column, first name in one table to first name in another, last name in one table to last name in another, we are making sure that the business entity ID in one table does not equal the business entity ID in another table. Therefore, our join condition is considered a non-equa join. So you may be wondering, why would we do this? Well, there's a couple of reasons why we would want to use non-equa joins. Some of the common uses include checking for duplicate data between tables, matching against a range of values, or computing running totals. So in this lesson, we're going to go look at how you can check for duplicate data in a table. We're also going to look at how you can match against a range of values. And then we'll save the computing running totals example for the last lesson because that was a little more advanced. So let's get into some of the examples. In this example, we're going to check for duplicate values. We'll use the person table as our example, we'll be looking at the first name and last name. What we'll be doing is checking the table to see if there are any rows that have the same first name and last name uh, across the table. We know that the business entity ID is a primary key in the person table, so that is unique. So given that, and knowing that the uh, first name and last name could potentially be duplicate, what we'll do is we will join the table on first name and last name to itself, and that will start making combinations of rows. And if you can imagine, we're going to start seeing where the table will start matching to itself, and naturally we're going to see where some rows are going to match right to themselves. And so from one person copy the person table, we're going to um, get the same business entity ID from the other copy. But there will be those cases where the business entity ID does not equal itself. And that is where non equijoin join comes in. And that's how we're going to find duplicates. So let's go look and see what that query looks like right now. So rather than type this query out, I just paste it in. And what I want to show you here is that we are first joining from the person table and we are doing an inner join right back onto the person table. We are going to join the person table on first name and last name. So we're going to be looking for, uh, you know, matching Chris to Chris in one table and Wenzel to Wenzel in the other. And we're going to check to see if that primary key matches. And in fact, we're, we're really checking to see if it does not match. Because if they don't match, 
then we know we have a duplicate. Because if they matched, what would that mean? If they match, that means it's the same record. So let's decompose this query so you can understand a little more what's going on behind the scenes. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in the primary keys so that you understand really what we're bringing back here in terms of the values from each row, right? So, whoops, we'll bring back P1 business entity ID. And then we'll do P2. business entity ID. And you can see where for the first result it brings in the entity ID where uh, for P1 it's 859 and for the second for um, P2 it's 5 and this is for Gail Erickson and you can see where for P2 or for P1 the middle name is null and for the second copy the middle name is A. One thing I want to do is show you if I was to comment out the non echo join part, what the query would look like. And so what I'm going to do is just put P1 entity ID just so we can see a little better what these columns are. And run this. So now you can see a little more clearly where the non-duplicated values are also coming back. So here we're, we matched value, the names from both tables and I'm actually getting the unique values too. So here's Gigi Matthew, uh, business entity ID nine matches to itself, 11 and so on. So here you can see where we have a duplicate for Sutra Mohan and what I'm going to do now is uncomment out this non equa join and show you how it will now return this row. But to do that, I'm going to also add in um, a where clause just so we can bring back any first names that begin with SU. So I'm going to uncomment out that non equa join and run it. And you can see it brings back a lot of entries. I, we're not seeing Sutra here, so we need to kind of refine our query here. And then I'll do P1 dot last name or first name like, and then I will do and then run this. And you'll see where we have Sutra Mohan now showing up as a duplicate. So here's a way where you can identify duplicate data in your table. So let's go on to our next example. For this next example, we're going to match a range of values. So let's assume we want to list every salesperson that is within one million dollars of year to say year to date sales of one another so one possible solution is to get every combination of salespeople compute the year to date sales from those combinations look to see if they are within one million dollars of one another and if so then keep the record We'll see how this would work in SQL as a query. So again, here's a query that I've brought in rather than typing, um, pasting in the example. I think it's quicker. And let me clean it up a little bit here so that it's easier to read. Let's take a look at this query. So this query is taking each salesperson and comparing the salesperson to one another. 
the salesperson is being joined on sales from last year and we are doing it by a range so it's going to look very strange here so we're not using an equal sign or even a, a not equal comparison we're actually using the between um, comparison operator and we are looking for any salesperson who has their year-to-date sales from last year that are either um, within one million dollars of our sales so if my sales uh, from last year were let's say nine hundred thousand dollars then I'm looking for another salesperson whose sales were either nine hundred thousand dollars minus five hundred thousand dollars so either four hundred thousand dollars or nine hundred thousand dollars plus five hundred thousand dollars so um i guess that'd be one thousand four hundred thousand dollars so within that range of um sales so from four hundred thousand dollars to one million four hundred thousand dollars in sales so if there's any salesperson in that range then i want to include them in my result and we do that for each salesperson based on their sales from last year and then we'll compile a list and so what this list is going to show us is our sales and then the person's sales from last year so you may be asking yourself why you would want to put a query like this together and it could be that the sales manager is looking to find salespeople that had sales close to another salesperson and he's looking to either team them up or set up a co friendly competition between them and this is one way to scan the whole database and find those pairings so let's run this query and see what we find so you'll see where I didn't bring in names of salespeople just to keep it simple but I have their ID you'll you can see where it's bringing in their ID and then their sales year to date and the person's sales from last year now one thing that's interesting is do you notice how it's bringing in the person again right so we need to fix that because it really shouldn't be bringing in the same person so we can add a and we can say the salesperson business entity ID does not equal sales to dot business entity ID because we know we don't really want to compare the same salesperson to themselves now let's run it and the other silly thing is is that we have some people that didn't have sales last year that may or may not be something that you would um, find to be an issue but what we could do is to winnow those out is say uh, we can make those zero actually we'll just say greater than zero right so now we have the salesperson and the sales associates that have sales that are within a million dollars of their sales from last year so salesperson 275 had sales and then sales of um, salesperson 276 was a million dollars and so on and it looks like there's 106 some records that match this type of criteria and one thing we could do if we wanted to make this even a little more restrictive is say that they have to be in the same territory right so we could say and s1 dot territory id equals s2 dot territory id so that we're keeping the competition within the same territory so this way i'm not getting a salesperson from territory one competing against somebody from territory six let's see what happens when we do this all right well this really took it down to only two people so that was interesting but i think now you can see where these joint conditions really make a query um, start becoming more restrictive with the rows and in a way also 
make the data more meaningful because now what we have is these are salespeople that have sales within a million dollars uh, from last year's sales year to date within the same territory. And that's a lot different than across the whole organization. So this is a good example and you can see how much more restrictive it is. Again, let me comment this out and then run it and you'll see this as expands um, to many more rows. So many more sales combinations of uh, salesmen come into play when I can go across territories. Also notice with non equi joins how many different operators I have in place here. I'm using a between, I'm using a not equals, I'm using a greater than, I'm using an equals. So the not equi join really has um, no restriction on what I can use. Um, you can see that by me using these, I'm still able to create a very meaningful query, right? When I run this, this query has a lot of meaning in the sense that I am bringing back, uh, I think, very useful information to a sales manager. He could use this to set up a really good competition between these two sales uh, associates in territory number six. And it's all based on um, last year's sales year to date. So hopefully you're finding that this example really drives home how non equi joins can be used to really look at your data and do a, some good compare contrast of rows, especially when you're looking at uh, rows from the same table. If you have questions about this, please ask, because I know this can get a little esoteric. It's not just as straightforward as doing a inner join from one table to the next. It can get a little crazy, and I certainly will answer any questions you have. So I'll see you in the next lesson.